Hey everybody, my name is Aaron Blaze, and I am an animator, a character designer, a painter, all kinds of different things. And today I'm going to be talking about creating light, painting, doing a painting, and getting light in your painting. It's something that a lot of people ask me about. It's something that I've been working on, and I'll always be working on it, because capturing light, I think, is the main idea of every artist. Um, you can't see without light. And so therefore, if you want to be a representational artist, um, you've got to be able to understand light, how it works, how it falls on objects and what it does. Um, right now, during Lightbox, I have my course uh, at CreatureArtTeacher.com, How to Paint Light, 50% off right now. So for the whole duration of Lightbox, you can get that for 50% off. So go on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and check that out. But what I'm going to do today is I've drawn this, um, I've kind of done a caricature of this Roman soldier and uh, uh, just a character drawing. And so I'm just going to do a painting and I'm going to talk to you about what I think about when I add light to my subjects. Or in some instances, people call it shading, whatever. But this is light. We, um, you know, like I said, you can't, as an artist, as a representational artist, you can't do representational work without understanding lighting because you want to show form and you can't see form without light and shadow okay so let's go ahead and dive in the first thing that i want to do is i want to start getting some local color in there so what does local color mean well local color is the color of an object when it's not lit and it's not uh in shadow it's just the color of an object like a green apple or red apple, or a green shirt, or a yellow banana, whatever it might be. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go in and uh, I'm going to start giving him his skin tone. I'm going to start giving his armor some color, uh, the fabric, his sleeves. I'm going to give him some color. I'm not going to be thinking about any kind of shading at this point. I'm just going to be thinking about getting that local color in there. Now, some people, uh, people are going to ask, is this, you know, the same thing that what you would do for um, uh, traditional media as well? Not necessarily. Sometimes I do. I do think about local color when I'm working in traditional media. Um, but I'm thinking about what that local color is doing under the light. What happens with, with digital media, like with what we're doing today, I'm working in Photoshop. I got an advantage because I can go ahead and paint just my local color and then I can add my my shadows and my highlights over the top of it I can break it up where in you know if I was painting this in oil or painting this in watercolor I'd have to be thinking about that all at once and what's nice about this especially when I'm teaching lighting is that I could break it up and talk about each element separately it gives us a little bit of an advantage. It gives you a little bit more control. And so all I'm doing right now is I'm just adding solid color. Now down the road, you know, none of our skin is one solid color. We've got all kinds of modeling and red blemishes and whatever. And so once I get this laid in, then I'm going to go ahead and add some variations of tone and, and whatnot. But that's still just local color. It's not going to be any kind of shading. So once again, local color is the color of an object when it's not lit and it's not in shadow. And then what we're going to do, once I get this local color down on, over the whole character, I'm going to go ahead and start thinking about the shadows. That's the first thing I like to think about. I try to determine where do I want my light source coming from? How many light sources do I have? And are there any objects around my character where I might get some bounced light from my light sources? Because light really has a life of its own. It definitely has its own way of behaving. And you want to make sure you correct it or ca capture it correctly. So here I've got his skin tone in. And I'm going to go ahead and lock this real quick before we go into any other tones. And I wanted to start messing around with some of his skin tone. So let's say his nose, around his nose, I want it to be a little redder. 
Maybe on his face. His chin. Now the brush that I'm using is my own custom brush. I get that question all the time. What kind of brush are you using? It really doesn't matter. Find a brush that you're comfortable with. And use that. This one is kind of a organic pastel -y kind of feel. Now I'm going to give him a little bit of a gray, blue-gray to his beard. Let's get into the blue. Let's just make it blue. Because sometimes it'll you get kind of a blue tint. Sometimes around the eyes as well. Let's get those ears. Those ears can get really red. Get those hands. You see, I'm just trying to play up a little bit of variation of tone in the skin. Anybody would have that. We all do. I find as I get older, I find more and more variation with age spots and everything else. There. So I'm going to go on ahead and unlock that layer and I'm going to get right back into our character here. He's an older man. This is actually based on my father. My father posed in, in costume for this. I'm definitely, it's a caricature. <clears throat> I'll show you the image. Here's the image of my father right here. And, um, but I'm going to change the lighting. I'm going to do my own lighting. I, uh, I like this lighting. I like a little bit of the rim lighting on the left side, but I'm going to, we're going to have multiple sources and uh, I'm going to get a little bit more dramatic and make it more nighttime. But uh, there's the original. And then there's the uh, caricature right there. Once you really start to understand your lighting, um, it starts to open up a whole new world for you because you can really uh, create worlds, images, that have a really strong basis in reality. And that's what we want to do as uh, representational artists. Let's have that base in reality, I think. At least I do. Yeah, I'm just going in getting a little more convincing in the, in the facial features. I'm going to go on to another layer, I think. Put it underneath. And uh, we'll do this outfit. His best is kind of this oiled leather. I'm just going to lay it all in first, and then we'll figure out what we want to change colors on. There. And then once I'm done with all this, I'll combine all the layers into one. I like to break up the layers and to build them up so I can, you know, like with the hands here with the, on top of the layer, I don't have to worry about drawing up to the line. There, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and let's do the lower part of his body as well. Once again, I do this, especially when I'm working digitally, I do this almost on almost every piece of art where I, I go in and just lay every all the local color in because it allows me to get a sense of what that image is going to look like before the light and dark. Now, it's just a rough estimation because once you get your light and dark in there, it's really going to pop. belt in there. I like that. Let's put a layer on top. 
I like the in the reference there's kind of an olive green tint to the to the sleeves. I like that. I'm gonna roll with that. There we go. Oops. Actually I want this part of the sleeve to be a different color. So I'm gonna stay out here. I want a little bit of variety. So there's a sleeve there. It almost looks like we're we're doing a uh, like an animated character. We're doing a color model for an animated character. This is what a lot of our when we would work on. I was an animator for Disney for 21 years, and when we would do our our color models, which is basically figuring out what colors your characters are going to be, we would just do this type of thing. We'd set them up like this. And because we couldn't rely on light and shadow, uh, generally in our animation, we had to really pay attention to what was happening with our, our, our colors and how they came together. There, so now that we have a, a, a quick basic rundown. Oh, actually, let me get that stick. Let me get the stick real quick. It's a little bit similar to the <clears throat> to the uniform. But hopefully, I'll be able to take care of that. There. So there's our initial pass on getting the local color. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to add some dirt, things like that to, to his uh, outfit. So I'm going to lock that. And, I, and I've got some different brushes that I can use. I've got this, this brush here that's got a nice pattern to it. If you look, you know, I can paint dirt on there very easily with that brush. The other brush here, nice patterns there. So I'm going to grab that. I'll kind of light with it. There we go. So let me, I'm going to create another layer over that. We're going to make a clipping mask. So by pressing down on control um, over the over this layer I can create a clipping mask what that allows me to do is only paint where the where the object is that I'm, I'm like the, the, the uniform I want so I can create this kind of worn modeled effect and not worry about drawing on anything else I'll put a little bit of blue in here. That shows wearing as well. There. See, it adds some interest. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a layer. Um, I'm going to put a layer on top. And I'm going to set that to multiply. That's going to be my blend mode. So that anything I draw over it was going to be darker. So this is where I like to put my shadows. So let's just call this rough shadows. I got this layer right on top. And I'm going to go in. Sometimes I go in with a cool. I'm going to actually stay warm this time because I don't want it to mute the the skin tone, but I mean, it's, it's a warm gray, I should say, because I'll do a cool gray as well. But for now, we'll work on my pastel. Now, let's see what we want to do for lighting. I definitely want the lighting to be coming down from above. Slightly off to the, well, if we do it off to the right, That'll allow us to do some nice rim lighting on the left side. 
you put all this in shadow, let's say, like that set to multiply, Actually, I want to. I want to. Uh, I think I'm going to create a clipping mask there. So I'm just going to change the position. I'm going to put the layer right over the the uh, costume layer. Actually, I got to. I need to do that. I need to combine all the costumes. There we go. So now I've got that all merged together. I'm going to create a clipping mask. Set it to multiply. And I'm just going to experiment real quick. I want to see where I might want to put some shadows. If I come out to the left. There we go. Pull this up a little higher. So I'm thinking about the light off to the my over my right shoulder and up high. So what it's going to do is it's going to cast the shadow, you know, to the left side of the face from where we're sitting. We cast the shadow under the chin, but not all the way up it. There we go. Definitely going to get a shadow in the eye area. Some shadows here. And you can start to see as you start laying in your shadows, the form starts to emerge. You start to get this three-dimensional effect. There we go. And this part of the hair is just casting shadow right onto the skin until it comes about. And this does that. Now let's do underneath the chin. Got some loose skin here. There, so we're nice. We're getting a nice shadow there. Now the shoulder is going to be in shadow. That chin is casting a shadow. I think the nose will stick out too. There we go. And this is going to cast a shadow onto the skin this way. There. So here, I'm going to get some relief. Meaning the top part is going to be a little bit more in light. The bark's, back's going dark. So you can see as we work these shadows in, thinking about where that light's coming from, um, your form starts to emerge. At this case, you know, don't worry if it's light or or uh, cool and warm or or whatever. That will come with maturity as an artist. What you really want to think about is what's in light and what's in shadow. Think about those forms. You know, if the light is shining in over my right hand shoulder as I'm sitting here drawing, then that's going to affect my dad in a big way. There we go. The hand is going to cast a shadow onto the onto the staff. Let's get some shadow in here. I 
once again, I'm thinking about the light coming down from the upper right and how it's going to fall across the arm. I'm also thinking about how the, the sleeve is going to cast a shadow inside on the arm. This is all going to be in shadow. There, so you can see as you start adding shadow over the top of your local color, boy, and, and think about, you know, one of the things I'm thinking about are, you know, if the direction of the light is coming in from the upper right, then things like the fingers along here, they're not as in direct light as, let's say, the top of the hand. So that's going to be brightest, whereas we're going to get a little darker along here. So, also, he's casting a shadow on his vest. There. A little bit of a shadow here. This is where it gets a little sketchy because this is all kind of in light, except for the volume of the the relief of the hand definitely in shadow down here we can get some shadow right across there and then the rest of that will be in light all right so let's get some shadows over here it's going to be you know, the light is coming from the upper right, so we're going to have dark shadows along this side. Maybe a few shadows here. If you come down into some of these wrinkles. So let's go along this, the side of the body here. I'm going to widen the view just a bit. There, I'm going to get in here and like this form turns away from the light. I'm, I'm thinking about you know, what's happening with the, the form and the fabric. There, getting some nice folds in there. I'm going to let that vest cast a shadow. As we come down, more and more of this vest will be in shadow. But we'll, we'll, we'll use some reflected light. We're going to get some reflected bounced light. We're going to imagine some light bouncing off some objects in here. I think the fist up here is going to cast a shadow right along here. There, just like that. This hand cast a shadow this way not crazy about that cross shadow that I just did there there we go there okay we'll get this belt in shadow I can't I kind of want to do a, a nice dramatic shadow across this body those of you that know me know I like to do that. And something like this really kind of calls for it, I think. I'm going to try it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of create this shadow starting from here. I'm going to follow the form. Oops, I'm going to go the other way. There, I want it to go like that. There we go. Let's put all this in shadow. Let's create this shadow going across his body. I'm going to soften it a little bit. There we go. I'm going to put, have it going across the, the, the stick right here. And we're just going to put everything, the whole rest of them, right into shadow. 
it's going to go solid with it. Because this, this simplifies, you know, I want some areas of rest where my eye can just relax. And this will allow us to do that. Now this is just our initial, our initial rough shadow pass. We're going to have deeper shadows. We're going to put some light into some of the shadows. There we go. Okay. Let's jump up to the hair real quick because we didn't really do anything there. Actually, we did a little bit. There, we'll get some sheen on it. Shadow on the left side of the pole. Or spear, I should say. That's a spear. A little shadow coming off the hand. There, so here's our first, our initial shadow pass. And you can see just by going from, if I take this off, there's our flat color. That's what we started with, with our flat local color. And then by adding shadow, all of, all, automatically you're starting to see light. Your brain is telling you that there is light and shadow there, and it's just describing the form. Look at that. Look how cool that is. It's like I'm turning a light on and off. See that? Pretty neat. So let's do another layer on top of that. Uh, another clip mask. And I'm going to set it to overlay. And just like uh, multiply darkens, overlay will lighten. And I'm going to go a little bit brighter with it. And I'm just going to hit some areas very lightly of uh, where I think some of our light's going to be. So the light is going to hit right along the crest on his forehead there. Right along the cheekbones. And I think it's going to hit very direct along the side of the nose. The side of the nostril. The side of the nose here. Right along the the nasal bone line. See that? I think we're going to get some nice bright light right along here. Along the edge of this lip. And think about where is the light going to be hitting the most direct? Sometimes it's underneath areas like that. Along the top edge of the wrinkles on the forehead. Along this side of the, the brow flesh. There. Can you see how that, along this part of the chin, that's most perpendicular to the light, actually, this whole section. Notice how it's all really starting to show its form now. This part of the chest. Knuckles here. This part of the hand. There. <clears throat> this part of the finger here, here, this part of the knuckle. Everything that's perpendicular to the light. And then as it's less and less perpendicular, I hit it less and less. There's going to be little blemishes and scratches in the armor that are going to catch light. So I'm going to draw those in. It's 
top edge of this collar. Now, even within the shadows, we can catch some light. You know, some edges will catch light in, within the shadows, so I can draw right through into the shadows. There, see there? I like how that that's coming coming together. Let's get this sleeve. Just catching light here. Catching light there. There we go. Once again, I'm going to go right into the shadow and pull some of these lights out. There. So you can get modeling right in with the, you know, right into the shadows. But that's, we're going to also get some reflected light on the shadows. So here's all, this is all really direct light onto the arm. Just like that. I want to go back to the shadows really quick. Still not liking this hand. I want to maybe get a little bit more shadow underneath. It feels pretty good. Let's go back to our light area. And let's get that stick. There we go. So now we have our basic light and shadow. Uh, that feels pretty good. I like that. Uh, I want to go in now and I'm going to start cleaning up the layer that we combined here. I'm just going to start cleaning up some of these outer edges. Now one thing I like to do at this stage is I love to create a secondary light source. Almost like a rim lighting. And in this case, actually, I want to do something else first. I got some holes I want to cover up. Some holes in the, the coloring. There we go. Let's just get them all covered up. There we go. So now what I want to do is I'm going to put a layer on top. And I want to think about this other light. First of all, let's go ahead and I want to darken the background. I want to get my background basically to where I'm going to have it uh, as far as the value goes. So I want to go cool with it. Go somewhere in here. I'm going to grab my big pec texture brush. I'm just going to start darkening this background. I'm going to have it get darker as we get down towards the bottom. They're kind of mimicking the shadow that's going across his body. Kind of what I'm trying to do. I also want to get some nice contrast. Setting this up for some nice contrast. Let's go a little darker still. There. So now what's happening is it's starting to direct your uh, attention up towards the top of his body, around his hands, his head. And that, to me, is where I want your attention. Okay? So now let's go back to that layer on top. And um, I want to add that secondary light source. Now let's do it with a blue light. Let's just do it with blue light. Almost like a silvery moonlight. I'm going to come up in here. I don't want to go too bright yet. No, so it's up, you know, it's not white yet. This is one that I made a while back. I'm not sure if this is the brush I'm going to use. But let's come up to the head here. One of the things I love about um, 
doing this secondary light like this is that it really helps to show off the form even more. Because it's catching little edges of you know texture in the skin showing off some of the relief here and there and I'm drawing right over the the dark line by the way I'm thinking about okay what surface the surfaces are turned towards I'm thinking about the the this lighting kind of behind and off to the left so it's just going to create this rim lighting effect. This is something I like to do in a lot of my illustrations. It's going to get a little bigger, I think. There we go. Maybe in here. I don't like it underneath the nose there. It shouldn't be there. It wouldn't. That wouldn't be catching. That light. There, see, it just starts to create this nice feel. I'm going to hit everything. I'm just going to work my way down the character. And it helps define detail. If you want to make up detail like I'm doing right now on the shoulder. I'm just kind of making up detail. It helps with that. And because it's behind, this is only going to go down so far. Like you won't, it's not going to catch, you're not going to catch much in here. It's really back here. I'll be a little bit, not too far up inside the, under the cover. But you can see, look how it's really kind of blue and gray up in the face. That's where I want you to see how value affects your color as well. Um, because you can see here, it's not really that bright along in here. But as we get down into here, it gets really bright. Let me get a little bit here. Let me bring it down a little bit. Maybe a touch back here, even up on, on the right shoulder. Let that fade out and it gets really strong again here. There. Clean that up a little bit. So there's our rim lighting. Now what one thing I want to do, I'm going to go brighter now, a little warmer, a little brighter. And I want to hit some hot spots and go even brighter and warmer. Where it's the most perpendicular to the light. Actually, let me. There we go. Kind of lock that layer so I can't really go outside of the lines I've created already. I'm letting these highlights there. See how it plays nice and uh, hot. There we go. So let's do the same thing in here. I'm just going to catch some little areas that will be highlighted. Might be bright there, right there, definitely bright here. So it makes your rim lighting a little bit more dynamic. Let 
There we go. So now I want to go in and I'm going to start uh, working towards the the uh, finishing it out. I'm going to put a layer on top. We're just going to start working in reflected light. We're going to start thinking about that. We're going to be thinking about uh, really bright highlights. That's something I, I really haven't hit yet. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and dive into that. I want to get, uh, I want it to be a warm light and I want it to, I'm not, once again, I'm, I'm saving the almost pure white for later. I'm going to pull back even more on that. There we go. Once again, I'm going to the most perpendicular parts of the skull, the face, putting in where I think you get a nice bright highlight. There it is. Get a little highlight there in the eye, maybe even underneath. Get a little bit of highlight there. There. There we go on the cheeks. <clears throat> now, I want to start getting rid of some of these lines, the line work in the face. I don't mind some of it in there, but I want to get rid of a, a fair amount of them. And, and some of that is done by um, reflected light, but it's definitely a change in value. Anytime you have a line, it's usually a change in value. It's two different values coming together, and that's what creates a line. And we represent it with a line. And so here, for instance, I want to have the nose kind of catching some underlight. So maybe it's a little bit brighter underneath. We have something like this. You know, the underside is, is a little bit brighter. Same with that cheek. Let's go ahead and get the shadow. I'm going to go a little darker. Right up against the underside of the nose just to get that, that feel of uh, light. And I'm going to push the shadow even tighter inside here. I'm going to go a, co a little cooler and a little grayer with some of the relief. Under the nose. We'll go a little brighter in that eyebrow. So you can see now it's all starting to come together a little bit better. I want to get some reflected light coming along this chin. Yeah, picking up the bottom of that chin is picking up light from the neck here. I'm going to get the same thing here. Nice and warm color. Picking up light. Let this get a little brighter. So a little darker behind the ear. brighter with that. There, just to smooth that out. Now I can go back in with my really bright brights. A 
and get that nose better. There we go. I'm going to get rid of that center line on that chin as well. There, just adding some color. Get some brighter value right over these lines here. There we go. So now that we have all this light on this side of the face, we're going to get some reflected light on these knuckles as well. Or even brighter with that. We're catching the light on the face. That light on the face is bouncing back and hitting that perpendicular surface on the knuckles. Let's go ahead and push the top plane of these fingers a little brighter just to round them out a little bit. There. There we go. Go ahead and get into the head. Just want to hit some highlights. And basically, I'm just trying to get whatever is most perpendicular to the light source. get a little frizz in the hair. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to hit some of these brighter areas. I'm going to go back to a rougher brush. Just hit little, little highlight areas. I might be catching a little bit more light on the texture. top of the collar, even within the dark shadows, well, there might be some definition we can do inside there. Like along the right side here, I can get some more definition in the pattern, in the pattern on the, on the uh, vest. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create another layer. Not a clipping mask, but I am going to set it to multiply. I want to go deeper. I want to get some deeper darks in some of these shadow areas. For instance, in the sleeve. some deeper shadows in here. Into the neck a little bit. In the ear. Now because the fabric is rough, you're not going to get super bright highlights on it because it's it's got a texture to it, but I do think we can go a little brighter. So I'm going to create a new layer. We're just going to hit some highlights. And keep them rough. I'm using a rough textured brush. There, we'll give the fabric a little bit of a rough wool feel. Yeah, that's what it needs here. Yeah, 
There we go. Have some nice bright yellow green. Once again, I want to mention, I mentioned it earlier in the uh, in the stream. If you want to learn more about lighting, I've got an entire course on creating lighting, how to approach your lighting. It's 50% off all through the entire light box uh, at creatureartteacher.com. So go on over there, check it out. Once you get a handle on your lighting, you've got a handle on everything. Really, because that's it's really the most important thing, I think, is understanding lighting. I'm going to do a little bit of modeling in here. A little bit of cooler color to show the volume movement and, and the uh, there we go and some of these folds. Yeah, we're getting a nice feel now. A couple more. This is where all the we can start hitting all your little details here. The little edges that can be a little brighter. See what I'm doing? And just a little brighter along that top edge. Letting it blend right in there. There. There we go. Getting closer and closer. Get along the top edge of these hands real quick. There we go. Just got a little modeling in there. I feel like the top of this thumb should be more light. There we go. I'm going to put a layer on top of this. We're going to set that to overlay. Whoops, not soft light, overlay. I want to get some warm, really warm color. And I'm just going to lightly go over the hands. I push the color a little bit on the hands. Let me get a little bit in the face. Play up some of that blue and the and those five o'clock shadow. I like to mix up different colors with the overlay just to get some interest. It makes for a more interesting skin tone. There. Especially in the shadow areas. There we go. See that? And push those shadows. Warm them up, I can cool them off. There we go. That feels pretty good. Let's hit a couple of highlights on here. A Roman soldier based on my old man. There we go. There. I'm digging it. All right. So 
next thing we want to do on this is I just want to push the color a little bit. See if we can push that. I'm just highlighting a couple of the edges here on his vest. I'm hitting a couple highlights on his fist, on his hands. There it is. There it is, folks, our little Roman soldier. Want to get some texture on him again. There. It's a little dirty. to go in with a all right let's go ahead and take this I'm going to put everything into a uh, folder I'm going to copy that folder And I'm going to flatten it or merge it. I'm going to merge the group. What I want to do now is I want to clean that up because there's a couple areas that they change their blend mode. Once you flatten it or blend them together. So I'm just going to hit clean up a couple of areas here. Now what I want to do is I want to push it image adjustments. Hue and saturation. I want to push that saturation a little bit, just a little bit, maybe 10 points. That's all I've done. Just wanted to push it a little bit just to see what we get. I like that. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go in with my bright. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go in with a, a, my color dodge and I'm going to get my pastel C. I just want to get a couple of areas. Get them to really shine. There we go. Nice, bright. Nice, bright rim light here. So we can get a nice, really hot edge. Like there's a super bright light back there. I like pushing that at the end the point where it glows. There we go. You know, we never did. We didn't put it on the, um, we didn't put it on the staff. All feeling pretty good. Just trying to see what last little textures we could get in here. I'm going to open up one of my grunge textures. Let's see what we got. That's a good one. Got a lot of nice little. That's that's a good one. I like that. That feels nice and dirty. I'm going to open that one up. Let's rotate it. 
90 degrees clockwise. Let's bring it right on top. Let's set it to multiply. Let's bring it up to the top here. Let's bring that back just a little bit on the opacity. And I bring the saturation down. And I'm going to go to image adjustments exposure. I'm going to really push the, the gamma. That'll really push the texture. So it really pushes that texture on the on the costuming. And then I can come in and just decide where I go to my eraser. I want I want it all clean around the head and his face. Maybe you can leave his hands a little dirty. Maybe some of the highlights will let those shine through a little bit. We'll give this just a grungy kind of feel. We'll clean up some of the highlights. There we go. So there's our approach, my approach to lighting. And in this case, it's a, a character, this Roman or some kind of guard uh, standing there with a spear character. Um, once again, you know, the approach is not really complicated. I come at it with, um, you know, finding that local color. Remember, local color, very important. So you come at it going after, you, I start with my local color first, and then I find my shadows, usually by setting my blend mode to multiply. Find those shadows, and then I create a new layer and set that layer to overlay where I can find my general highlights. And then you start working at your details. You find your brightest brights, your darkest darks, and you start working towards finding those smaller details. And then remember, you can also use your blend mode, uh, such as overlay, to tint areas as well, which is what I did here. And, uh, and also, remember that secondary light, that secondary light that I created along the left side of the image here on the character really adds a lot of drama and actually shows off the form quite, quite well as well. So there you go. Remember, go on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com uh, anytime during Lightbox, and you can get my, uh, my approach to painting light uh, for 50% off. It's a much bigger course than what I showed you today. This is just a kind of a, a, an introduction. But I really take you through everything that I've learned over the years on my approach to painting light. So go on over and check that out. It's CreatureArtTeacher.com. I hope you enjoy Lightbox. I want to thank Bobby Chu and the rest of the gang for having us here. Um, have a great time, everybody, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.